subtext going on here. <laughs> oh, yeah. my, oh my lord. Hi everybody, welcome to the Facebook Live Lounge. <laughs> I'm Allison Camerata here with, look who it is, hey. Jake Tapper. Hi everybody. Hi. He, um, I don't know if all of you know this, but he's my work husband. Yeah, we have like a little thing. We have a little thing. We're estranged now, <laughs> sadly, since that the Cuomo. quiz show. <laughs> yes. Cuomo. Chris Cuomo has gotten in the way, as well as our real spouses. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, um, how's your convention going, Jake Tapper? It's first of all, it has to be said, this is an unusual convention, oh. and there are surprises, <laughs> really? and uh, it's been uh, it's been exciting to cover. Okay, right biggest now. surprise so far. Biggest surprise so far, well, the Melania Trump plagiarism controversy was a huge surprise. Usually, that speeches happen. aren't plagiarized uh, <laughs> at conventions, uh, my, in my experience. Right. But what do I know? I've only covered 10 of them. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. So. And it was also a surprise on New Day when Paul Manafort, the campaign manager for Donald Trump, campaign chairman, denied that what we saw with our own lying eyes was happening. He did, although we should point out, uh, that just in the last hour or so, the Trump campaign has basically admitted it. Uh, a staffer has come forward and explained how the passages that were identical, essentially, uh, ended up in Melania Trump's speech. And what's the explanation? The explanation was that Melania Trump was talking with uh, this staffer, who I think works for the Trump Organization, um, about things that she liked, uh, things that were inspiring, and read over the phone uh, some of Michelle Obama's speech. Okay. And the woman took notes. And then somehow that ended up in Melania Trump's speech. It, it, okay. is, a, it is a plausible explanation. It is a plausible Absolutely. Explanation. But what, what's odd is why not just admit this a day ago so we would have dropped it? Because I think from now on, I think it's going to be dropped now because now we have an explanation and clearly the campaign is not telling us any longer that the sun is not in the sky. <laughs> well, yes and no. I mean, Paul Manafort was again saying the sun wasn't in the sky. I mean, I think that there's two issues here, and that is how the plagiarism could have happened. I think we all understand that, okay, that was a mistake, that we can let go. But the, no, it didn't. Yeah. That's not, no, there was no plagiarism. I don't there get a it. lot of people say words like that. Those aren't special words. These are not the droids you're looking for, right? I saw that on your show. Oh, did you? I yeah. liked it. And yeah, I mean, we should also point out, just in the name of, uh, of being fair and balanced, to coin a phrase, uh, that the other night uh, the Democratic presumptive presidential nominee was saying things that were just patently on their face wrong to, in an interview with Charlie Rose. No, this uh, FBI director never said that. He never said that. Yes, he did. Right. He said it. Yeah, What's so, up with this? So, so why are we through the looking glass? What's happening? I mean, I this know. is a crazy convention. If you've all been following it, there's so much here that doesn't happen at regular conventions. I remember a time, Jake, when I first worked for Ted Koppel, preeminent you know journalist in this country, and he announced that he was going to stop going to the conventions. Because when I was talking about this the other day, was that in two thousand four? I think it was. I think it was either eighty eight. Oh. I no, no, it was, was ninety six. It was the Bob Dole convention. Oh, Bob Dole. Okay. Right. Wasn't okay. It? I, think go, it was I, Bob I would go with that because eighty eight feels a little early for that. Yeah. So maybe it was in the nineties. I was going to say, how old are you? Well. Back during the Harrison administration, <laughs> Ted Koppel and I got on the teletype. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think it was 96. He stormed because, out because it was an infomercial. Yeah, said. it was an infomercial. It was so dull. There was no news. It was just all manufactured news. Not so. Not so here. Week. No, absolutely. And there are there are delegates who love Donald Trump here, the majority of them. There are some that are grinning and bearing it. And there are some still uh, standing and, and rebelling against it. And we're going to see that again next week, too. There are a bunch of Bernie Sanders supporters who still are determined uh, to to fight the good fight in their view. Can we go to a question? Because I like yes. what Michelle and Juan Gonzalez Aguilar are asking. How many more days of this? It sounds like they've had enough the way they're phrasing it. it depends, well, uh, not to sound like Bill Clinton, but it depends on what your definition of this is. Or of. Um, the uh, There's Wednesday and Thursday for the Republican convention, yeah. and then that's it. So, And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for, for the Democratic convention next week, and that's it. But if you mean this in terms of... You and I. <laughs> you and what I, we're then, doing. Then that's Then it's, you know, it's minutes. endless. It's timeless, actually. Timeless and in half an hour. Interminable. Both. Um, but if you mean this <laughs> political contest, uh, no so wait, wait. November. I'm not kidding when I ask you this right now. What day is today? Wednesday. Okay, it's Wednesday. I, I get up so early here. New Day, the show that I do, is an extra hour early here. Five to nine. That's a long time. And I actually lose context of like how what time it is. How are you still awake? I don't know, Jake. I don't know, but I do know I'm delirious. But how do you have no bags under your eyes? How is it that you look like you're, you're fresh as a daisy? I'm going to kiss you. 
<laughs> Wait till the camera's off, for the love of God. Let me go to the next question. Chris asks, a lot of people talking about Hillary and how GOP kept saying, lock her up. Are Democrats watching, too? Yes. Democrats are watching. I had Jennifer Granholm, former uh, Michigan governor, on today, and she said, oh, of course, we're all watching. We're fact-checking. We're watching what they're saying. Um, you know, Hillary Clinton can, or her campaign can pretend we're not paying attention to what's going on there in Cleveland, yeah. but they're watching closely what's going on, and they will have to address it or respond at some point. Yeah. I mean, want. I think if I, can, if I can try to assume what Chris is saying is he's suggesting that maybe, and if I'm reading into this, Chris, I apologize, um, but maybe lock her up as a chant is uh, you're you're saying that perhaps democrats would be put off by it uh that it's that's a little less make america work again make america great again make america safe again and a little bit the oxbow incident and uh there are people who feel that way i asked governor chris christie about that earlier uh what did he feel about this lock her up chant and he said ah oh, people are just having fun it's a convention um well he worked them up into a lather he has that effect on people yeah I mean, he's he is a Sven. That's why they call him the Svengali of New Jersey. Do they really? No one calls no, him that. No, no, ever. It's never happened. <laughs> um, well, it happened once just now. Jason asks thoughts on Chrissy's blistering attacks on Clinton last night. You're a student of politics, mm -hmm. so are, do, are those the most vitriolic or blistering, as it's been called I, in I, a long time? I thought Christie's uh, prosecution of Hillary Clinton, if you will, was perfectly within bounds of what we hear in politics. He laid out a substantive case against her. Uh, and uh, you might disagree with it and you might dispute the facts, um, but I, I didn't think it was like out of bounds. Some of the things that we have heard, uh, the invocation of uh, Lucifer, that was an unusual moment by Dr. Ben Carson. I don't know, you probably weren't up at that. Well, end. I was up because he came on our show. Are you not watching my show closely enough? I was off doing the Chris Christie thing. Okay, better. Uh, he was on our show. And, and did he you ask him about Lucifer? Yes, because he said the whole thing about Saul Alinsky cited Lucifer and Hillary Clinton cited Saul Alinsky. I, I couldn't follow it. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I thought Christie was uh, within the bounds of normal. You did? Okay, so in Lucifer. other words, you thought he was in the bounds, but the crowd that was saying, lock her up, lock her up, that they just went sort of off the... Off the hook. I'm not offering an editorial judgment one way or the other about the locker up crowd. Uh, Why not? Because um, it's not my job. But yes, I it is. I'm asking you, is it more vitriolic than past conventions? Locker up is, is more vitriolic than past conventions. Absolutely. I think so. I'm not saying whether that's a positive I or know. a negative thing. Oh, I know that. You would never editorialize on anything. Wendy says, if you two did the news every night, I would watch it. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. That's great. Call our agents. We just need, uh, I don't know, six a million studio. more like you and, uh, yeah. and a studio. That's all. Oh. A lot of people in the comments are saying, never Hillary. Are we seeing a lot of that sentiment here in Cleveland? Yes, we are. <laughs> I can attest to that. I went out and yes. did the MOS, you know, in our business, man on the street interviews, sexist. And I did MOS uh, down this street where all sorts of colorful characters had gathered, people in flags. There was one guy, I couldn't tell if he was a Trump supporter or a Trump denier. I saw that guy. I know who you're talking about. He had a man on a leash. Oh, no, I didn't. Not that guy? No, I saw a guy who was dressed up as, it's a tramp Trump, and he had like a, he was pregnant as if he was impregnated by Trump, but wow. he also had an anti-Hillary sign. Ah, mixed metaphor, <laughs> no, I feel. It's one of the reasons we're in this, the pickle we're in. Yeah, but anyway, yes, I mean, obviously in Cleveland, we hear a lot of never Hillary sentiment. Samuel asks, what is the most surprising interview you've done this week? You, you answer it, and then I'll answer. Or I can go first if you want to go think ahead, about it. Go ahead. I have it. to think about it. Um, we interviewed uh, the gentleman who did the, I think it was the benediction at the end of the Tuesday night um, convention activities. Uh, I forget his name right now, but he's the head of Muslims for Trump, American Muslims for Trump. Uh, we interviewed him. And um, to be completely candid, his existence was surprising to me. The, the idea that there would be somebody, because Muslims have, American Muslims have been so outspoken saying that they are so offended by things Donald Trump has said, particularly when he called for a temporary ban on all Muslims entering the United States. That is an interesting one. So what did he say? Why does he say he loves Trump? Um, the, the recognition of uh, the need to combat radical Islam. Uh, and, uh, and then just a lot of the general reasons why people like Donald Trump. Uh, he'll bring jobs, he'll negotiate tougher trade deals, he'll stand up to the elites, that sort of thing. Um, I guess our most surprising is the one that I cited already, Paul Manafort, who said, no, there was no plagiarism, not at all. There were barely any even similar lines. You're hearing things, things like that. It's hard. It's surprising because when you're so clear that you've seen something or heard something and somebody says, absolutely not your your judgment is clouded you're mistaken it is there is a moment on air live where you're sort of 
you know, your your uh, neurotransmitters are clicking in, thinking, is can that possibly be right? No, no, it's not right. Everybody heard it. It's called cognitive dissonance, and it's happening a lot in this election <laughs> cycle. A lot of things that people are saying, there is not a, a sun in the sky. It does not exist. And as I said before, these are not the droids you're looking for. I understand the Jedi, The Jedi mind trick. Yeah. Um, is that the same as a Vulcan mind meld? No. Star Wars and Star Trek but are two. I know, I know. But I mean, is it the no. same effect? Oh, Does God. the Vulcan mind meld also I, trick you I, into I, things? I have so much work have to so do. We have so much work me, to do. Grasshopper. <laughs> so much work to do. Um, Yoda. I don't. The, what Lisa asks, what have the protests been like? You've been um, leading them. What are they like? <laughs> <laughs> I. <laughs> That's what good. have they been like? Yeah. Uh, you're, you're funny. I don't yeah. care what Cuomo says. Um, I haven't seen them. I, I, they, uh, I haven't seen protests. I've, I saw, pic I've seen pictures of them. I've seen them, them covered on my show, but I haven't been there firsthand to give an experience. I, I have not been there firsthand either, but a friend of mine at a different network uh, told me that she encountered some who were wearing masks, and that's always a creepy... I don't like that. I don't like it either. That's a creepy sensation when you can't see somebody's face and they're wearing a... Anonymous really masks? Were they yeah, anonymous, anonymous masks. I don't like that. And those are scary guy, masks. So what is it, Guy Fawkes? Guy Fox? How do you pronounce that? I don't, want, I don't want to say how I would pronounce that. <laughs> Dion asks, first of all, thank you, Dion. We're honored that you're joining us. I assume it's the famous uh, singer, Dion. Uh, what kind of speech? <laughs> would Mike Pence give? Well, Mike Pence give. It disappeared from I know. The I saw that, but I had read it, luckily. What kind of speech will Mike Pence give? Uh, Indiana Governor uh, Mike Pence will give a speech. Uh, that Vice I, presidential pick, let me add. I, I don't think Jake knows that yet. Big I've news. been on vacation. I know. Um, Mike Pence, I'm sure, will give a very strong uh, uh, articulation as to why you should vote for Donald Trump. And conservative principles. Conservative principles. He'll, and uh, he'll try to, since he is a part of the uh, the conservative wing of the party, the evangelical uh, conservative wing of the party, I'm sure he will try to make the case for why Donald Trump represents those values, especially when it comes to the um, abortion, uh, being against abortion, Supreme Court picks, uh, gun rights, etc. And I'm sure there will be a very vigorous prosecution of Hillary Clinton as well. Okay. Uh, Julie asks, how long are your days when uh, you're covering a convention? Julie, first of all, thank you for caring. Thank you, Julie. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for caring. You're a considerate, kind person. They're crazy. They're crazy days. They're insane. And what every, are your hours? Um, well, I mean, up in the morning to do interviews. What and, time? And, uh, it depends on the morning, but let's just assume seven. Okay. But uh, but then also, my, you know, my show's on from, so he's shooting, and then my show's on from four to five, and then I'm part of the coverage from eight to one. So oh. I'm in bed by like two. So yeah. that's a grim day. And here's the other thing. Everybody, and I don't know if your husband thinks this, but my wife does. Everybody thinks that we're here like gallivanting and having a rocking time. You must be having so much fun at the convention. No, these are brutal. <laughs> there are a lot of work. I mean, it's an honor to, to cover them and all that, but, but it is very, very tough. Agreed. I have not, I can't go out to dinner because I wake up at 2 a.m. Our show starts early at 5 this week, so we leave the hotel at 2.50, so it doesn't uh, allow for a lot of gallivanting. After the show is over at 9, I spend most of the time wandering around in a fugue state. <laughs> beyond that. So I don't know what I'm doing. I can't tell you what I'm doing for the rest That's of the every day. Now and then the, every now and then I get a call from the police and they ask <laughs> if I know this woman because when she's not looking, I pin my phone number on the back of her shirt. If I could say one other thing, I haven't told you this, oh. but one thing I tried to do because it isn't enough to do two uh, conventions back to back in, in this crazy era, but um, I'm actually trying to uh, end the convention era this two weeks in better shape than when I began. Why? Just a challenge, you know Meaning, why? Because I don't want it. Because I'm. It's a way. It's a reason for me to not eat the pizza. You're right. You're right. They're that, always that putting the pizza wrong, in front you're of right. you. I actually asked the wrong question. The question is not why. The question is how. How, how are you doing that? Um, work out every morning. Although I didn't do it today. And uh, and so he's fallen off. We've been here two days. <laughs> and not three. I did two workouts. And then not eat the junk that they're constantly putting in front of you. And like this is not a complaint, but it, but um, yes, it is. <laughs> Nobody is, nobody, like, in these control rooms or whatever, there's there's not, like, oh, you know, have some kale. It's no. just it's just nonstop Snickers. Yeah, there was cheesecake this morning for Hot breakfast. Hot dogs. Cheesecake for breakfast. I was happy about it. But I don't think that that's what seven out of eight doctors would recommend. Hot dogs. And, by the way, if I can say something about this, like, Please, Hot dogs. Please, stop now? Would you want to sit, like, let's, let's just uh, make it Chris Cuomo. Would you want to sit next to Chris Cuomo after he had a hot dog? Let's be honest. We're adults here. Wow. No. I didn't know the direction you were going to go with that. It's disgusting. These things are not good for you, and they have an effect. Do they? Well, I can, can just you imagine you're, you're in the middle of an interview, and you're like. <laughs> Is that you, <laughs> Governor? <laughs>
Lisa from Canada. This has totally gotten off the rails. You should have done this on day is one when we had alive? sleep. <laughs> but, um, but I love I love Google. I'm just joking. I know it's Facebook. Lisa from Canada comments: How strong is the international interest around this convention and this election? It's intense, very intense. I've, there are reporters here from all over the world, uh, and uh, people are are absolutely fascinated. And Donald, I mean, one of the things that Donald Trump has done, like him or not, is he's talked about foreign policy and trade quite a bit. So there is intense interest all over the world in uh, in what he will do if elected. Our next viewer, I think his name is Derek Hunky. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it is. I think it's Hunike. I th it, it might be oh, Hunike. Huni Let's call him Hunky. Let's call him Hunky. Yeah. Don't you want to be called Jake Hunky? Is that your stage that'd a, name? That would be a good neck. Uh, uh, he says, awesome. love you guys. We love you too. Thank Thanks, you Derek. for watching. We do actually, and I mean that. From Howard, any idea how Hillary might choose her VP? Um, I don't have any insider information, but I can I do. Uh, but I, uh, okay. Well, I don't have any insider information, but I know that it's going to happen on Friday or Saturday. And it's likely going to be either Tim Kaine or Tom Vilsack. That's Tim what Kaine, I've heard. Tim Kaine, the former governor, current senator uh, from the Commonwealth of Virginia, and Tom Vilsack, the former governor uh, of Iowa, now the secretary of agriculture. You're a betting man. Go ahead. Which one's it going to be? What's it going to be, boy? Yes or no? I think if she went with her gut, it would be loaf. Vilsack. Hmm? And if it went, she went with her head, it would be Kaine. So I think ultimately she'll go with, uh, with King. I hear That's you. what I think. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I interviewed Sherrod Brown today. Senator from Ohio. Thank you. Um, who feigned complete ignorance. Or perhaps it was real ignorance. One of the problems with appointing Sherrod Brown, who is a populist. He and, was on the short list. Yeah. Is that uh, the governor of that state, the state in which we are currently sitting. Ohio. Ohio is a Republican, John Kasich, and uh, he would ha get to appoint his replacement, and the Senate is going to be, it's going to be tight, uh, who the Democrats or Republicans control. I get it. So the ripple effect would not be good, so I guess it's not going to be him. That would be my guess. Okay. Uh, Helen, what's the theme for tonight's convention? Make, make America, America fun again. No. no. Make America um, Drunk. one. Make America one again. One again. Right? Yeah, make, Amer make America one again. Uh, uniting. Oh, that would be great. Who's speaking this evening? Mike Pence. Mike Pence. Newt Gingrich. Newt. Um, Marco Rubio via video. Yep. Um, he already did his speech, Rubio. Oh, he did? Yeah. And have you seen it? I have not. I'm not <laughs> on his staff. You seem to be in the know. Well, somehow. I interviewed him yesterday, and he said that he already uh, he handed it. He, sa he said, I've already sent them the video. I don't know if they've aired it yet or not. <laughs> he's not watching, apparently. Well, he's campaigning. He's um, up for re-election. Ted Cruz. Right. So what do we think Ted Cruz, is Ted Cruz going to do an actual endorsement or just by appearing here, is that an endorsement? There is a lot Donald of pressure. Trump? We, I mean, people in conservative media like the National Review have reported that Ted Cruz is not going to endorse Donald Trump. It will probably be a criticism. But of I don't get it. Why, why are we parsing words? If he's here, that means that he supports him. And isn't that sort of an a de facto I endorsement? I agree. And if he says he's going to vote for Donald Trump, is that not an endorsement? I don't know. Um, but uh, I can tell you that when I interviewed Chris Christie earlier today, he was really fired up. Ted Cruz better endorse Donald okay. Trump tonight. Oh, yeah, it was very vociferous. If he's the man he presents himself, it was really, really strong. So my guess is that there's some um, unease uh, in, in Camp Trump about whether or not Ted Cruz is going to do this. Ooh, uh, interesting. There's unease in Camp Camerata about this as well because Chris Cuomo makes bets with me all the time. Yeah. So at 5.05 .05 this morning, he's like, okay, uh, well, let's put a wager on it. Camerata. What do you bet? I think we actually bet money. I, I was I was in a weakened <laughs> state when he made me do this at 505. I didn't even know what he was talking about. Okay. He's like, okay, Ted Cruz endorses or not. So I think I took Ted Cruz will endorse. You guys need to define terms because uh. I'm being told to rap. You guys need to define terms because if he says he's going to vote for Donald Trump. But doesn't officially use the word endorse. What yeah, does that what does mean? that mean? Exactly. It's splitting I hairs, I guess. Um, I'm told to rap, but let's just do one more question. Uh, what's the best part about Cleveland? Being with Jake Tapper. Yeah, Alice, this is the, this is the highlight uh, of, of it all right now. So thank you for giving me an excuse to hang out with this incredible woman. And uh, I hope you guys are having a fun convention. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.